So our host this evening is Miss Amanda Turner from, um, actually, sorry, McCarthy now from Children's Hospital, Colorado. And she is a certified specialist in sports dietetics and a registered dietitian as well. She went to University of Kansas Medical Center and completed her internship there as well as her Master of Science. She's worked with a couple different groups, um, such as the Biggest Loser Resort at Fitness Ridge, Curves International, and University of Colorado Anschutz Health and Wellness Center. Um, she also had her own company for a while and saw athletes ages 12 to 80. And then currently she's working with Children's Hospital Colorado Sports Medicine Center. And her goal is to educate athletes early on how to fuel their bodies to prevent disordered eating and injuries throughout the rest of their athletic careers. So um, we're really excited to have her on today. And then I guess on a personal note, she likes, um, well, for interest is she likes staying active in a variety of sports, basketball, running, biking, and she's qualified for the Boston Marathon twice. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda to get everything going. Thank you. And thanks for everybody for joining us today. I'm excited to be here. Um, and to be cooking with you. So feel free to have your screens on if you're cooking with me. Um, I would love to see what you guys are doing. If you're not cooking with me, um, that's perfectly fine as well. If questions come up, don't hesitate to tap or type those into our chat box um, and we will answer those as we go throughout or if you have questions at the end, I'm happy to answer those as well. Um, so my job as a sports dietitian is not only just to educate you on how healthy eating works and why we're eating healthfully, um, but to also make it fun and to make it taste good at the same time as well. Um, so I'm working primarily with young active kids. So I'm going to talk a lot about uh, the nutritional benefits of this recipe, as well as different mm -hmm. portion sizes that might be indicated based on what your activity level is currently. Um, so cooking is a really important skill for us to have if we're looking to be healthy. Uh, if we're eating out constantly, we tend to get higher levels of sodium, higher levels of saturated fat, and lower levels of nutrition density. Um, so what, when we're cooking at home, we can use more of those whole foods um, and get just a lot more uh, rounded nutrition on a daily basis. Um, so I hope this helps to improve your cooking skills. Some of the things we're going to do today um, will require things like chopping. If you've never cut an onion before or cut mushrooms before um, and you're not sure how to do that, please make sure that you're asking a parent or, or someone older to help you with that initially um, and get permission to do those things. Um, if you've never done those before, we've got some other tools that we can use that make it a little bit safer so that we don't end up cutting any of our fingers, okay? So today we are using a traditional classic recipe, the meatloaf recipe, but we're putting a little spin on it. We're gonna make a turkey meatloaf. So the differences in our recipe compared to like a classic meatloaf recipe, we're using turkey instead of a high fat beef. So it's gonna be lower in fat, lower in saturated fat specifically. Um, we're also going to be using a whole grain, which is going to be oats today, instead of using breadcrumbs. Um, we're also going to add some vegetables in as well. So we've got onions and mushrooms that we're going to add into this recipe. Now, if you hadn't seen the recipe ahead of time and I just said mushrooms and you're out of here, just hold on, stick with me for a little bit, because if you hate mushrooms, um, they are a little bit different in this recipe. So I would ask that you still please try it to see if this is a way that you could um, get some mushrooms into your diet. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, when I start educating my uh, active individuals on nutrition, I like to start with talking about macronutrients. So if you haven't heard the term macronutrients, um, these are the nutrients that we need on a daily basis to fuel our bodies. So it includes three different things. It includes carbohydrate, protein, and fat. The main item that we're using in our turkey meatloaf is our turkey. So we've got one pound of turkey. If you're cooking along with me, you're gonna need a big <laughs> bowl and we're gonna go ahead and put that turkey into our bowl. We're gonna mix all the ingredients in one bowl. And I actually made a mistake because before we even do that, we should be doing something else before we start cooking. If you, if you have any idea what that might be, we need to wash our hands, right? So go ahead and head to the sink if you haven't washed your hands yet. Mine's over here in the corner so you can't see me very well. When you're washing your hands, 
Your goal is going to be to put soap on your hands, scrub them really good, all surfaces, and sing happy birthday to yourself twice. So that's the way that we can make sure that we're getting enough time scrubbing our hands and rinsing them off uh, that we've removed all the germs from our hands, which makes our food safer as well. So go ahead and finish up washing your hands. I'm going to dry off here really quickly. And now we're ready to start cooking. So we went ahead, I put the turkey in the bowl. We talked a little bit about macronutrients. Um, I want to pull up our first poll question. So to keep you guys engaged in this, um, in the talk, we're going to have some poll questions coming through. So I just told you we've got three main macronutrients and I want to get your opinion. What do you think this recipe is going to have the most of? What's the main macronutrient in this? Is it carbohydrate, protein, or fat? Go ahead and pick your answer now, and we're gonna get an idea of what you guys think the answer is. Looks like we've got some answers coming in. You're gonna have to excuse me because I'm gonna lean forward a little bit. Looks like most, most people, most everybody has guessed protein. Good, okay, great. Protein is the correct answer. So since turkey is our main ingredient, thank you, Megan. Um, since turkey is our main ingredient, turkey is primarily made of protein. Um, so protein is going to be the main macronutrient that we're getting out of this recipe. So it's gonna be a really high protein recipe. So after we've got that turkey in the bowl, we actually wanna go over to our oven and get it preheated so that it's ready by the time we're ready to put our meatloaf in. Um, so we're gonna preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna make sure your rack is in kind of the middle of the oven. So we're gonna end up putting the meatloaf right in the middle of the oven. So go ahead and get that preheated so that it can warm up so that by the time we're done mixing everything together, we can just put the meatloaf in and it can start cooking for us. Okay, so we're gonna start in with our vegetables next. So um, from a veggie standpoint, we're gonna start with our mushrooms. So I love mushrooms personally. I know not everybody loves mushrooms. So again, if you're in that camp, hang on with me for just a second. Let me talk about them. The reason we're adding the mushrooms in with the turkey meatloaf is because the moisture in the mushrooms, when they cook, they'll release some extra water. So it helps to replace the extra fat that we would normally get from a high fat beef adding into this recipe. Um, so we're gonna choose mushrooms to help add that moisture when they're chopped up really, really small. Um, so when we're chopping our mushrooms, we can do that with just a knife and kind of cut them one direction and then cut them the other direction. This can create kind of some big pieces of mushroom though. And I don't, I don't prefer that for this recipe. So what I really like to do is use a little chopping tool that I have. So if you have a chopper, if you have a food processor or a blender, this is the way that you can get the mushroom in the smallest pieces and you will not notice it as much in the recipe because they're in small, tiny little pieces and it's going to be a similar texture to what the meat is. Um, so I'll show you how this works. We're just gonna fill up our, our small chopper about halfway. So if you have a small one like I do, you're gonna have to use it a few different times. But we'll go ahead and turn it on. It's going to be noisy for just a second, and I'll show you what the outcome is. So all I'm doing is just pulsing the uh, the button on the processor here, or on the chopper here, and you can see we can pull out these few little these few big pieces, but you can see how small those little pieces of mushroom are compared to I chopped these by hand earlier and you can see they're they're just a little bit larger. Okay, so if you hate mushrooms or someone in your family hates them, the chopper is the way to go because you get it almost into like a pureed mix and then it, it um, distributes really nicely with with the meat. So let's go ahead and pull up poll question number two that talks about mushroom nutrition as we're adding this into our recipe. So I'm going to add in the pre-chopped mushrooms that we have here. We're adding one cup of the chopped mushrooms. 
But I want you to guess what the nutrition content of mushrooms is. Why do you think I like nutrition or mushrooms so much? Is it because they're high in potassium? They're high in B vitamins. They are high in vitamin D or they have all of those things. I'll give you just a few minutes to answer. So it looks like there's some for potassium and some for all of the above. Okay, well, you're both right because they all, they definitely have potassium, but they do have all of the nutrients that we have listed there. So potassium is really helpful for our muscles and for our hydration. Um, B vitamins help with our normal um, energy metabolism. So it helps with energy for all of our organ systems in the body. And then vitamin D is really helpful for bone health and also helps with our immune system as well. Um, so mushrooms are a really helpful food for all of those reasons. So if you hate them, again, give them a shot in this recipe and see what you think when you try them. Okay, so we're gonna finish, uh, put the rest of these mushrooms aside and move on to our onion next. So this is where if, you don't, if you're not skilled with knife skills, um, this might not be the part of the recipe that you want to complete. Ha ask somebody else to help you with this. Uh, but we're gonna chop up our onion. Whenever we're chopping an onion, I am not a chef, but I have learned this from, um, from other chefs. We wanna make a claw type of shape with our hand so that we don't end up cutting our thumb because it's sticking out. So when we make a claw, we can put the knife by our knuckle without actually cutting our fingertips or cutting our thumb. So when we're chopping that onion, I've already removed the skin off of the onion, the papery feeling on the outside, that doesn't taste very good, so we wanna get rid of that. Um, we'll make that claw with our hand, and then we're just gonna chop it straight down this direction. And then we'll turn that onion and chop it the other way to get our small pieces of onion. So onions, you might notice when you're chopping them, I went ahead and chopped some ahead of time and let this one sit out. Because if you've ever chopped an onion before, have you noticed that people are crying when they're chopping their onion? Um, that's because of that really strong, potent smell. Well, that smell actually has a name. It's called organosulfide. Um, it's found in onions and garlic and leeks and shallots. Um, and it's a, it's a plant-based chemical that's really healthy for us, actually. Um, so the onions that make you cry more are actually a really good thing. They're really good for our health. Um, now we're going to be adding a cup of our diced onion into our recipe here. And we'll go ahead and pull up poll question number three now too on onions. So those organosulfides that we were just talking about, the ones that make you cry, that, that make the onion smelly, um, those are helpful for our health. Which ones do you think is... Uh, are the correct answers for this. Do you think that those organosulfides help with heart disease? Do you think they help with stress fractures? Do they help with stomach cancer? Or is it both A and C? So go ahead and cast your vote. And we'll talk a little bit more about those. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and add your one cup of chopped onions into your big bowl. Okay, it looks like there's, um, most people did A and C and someone said stress fractures. Okay, so the correct answer is A and C. So it helps with both heart disease as well as stomach cancer. So it's a really healthy item for us to, to add into um, our diet on a regular basis. It also adds a lot of flavor in this re recipe in particular. Um, it's not helping so much with stress fracture prevention in this case, but really great health benefits that we're getting out of the onion. So now we've essentially done most of the heavy work with this recipe, so we can put our, cu our cutting board away here. Um, now we're just adding in our binders and our flavor ingredients. So for flavor, we're gonna add some salt and pepper. There's not a, a portion size on the salt and pepper. I like to do just a few shakes. So like a few shakes of salt and a few shakes of pepper. If you like it more spicy, you wanna do a little extra pepper, that's okay. Um, Salt is an ingredient that's great for really active people because it helps with our hydration balance. Um, but if you are trying to limit your salt intake, you can just keep that a little lower or you can take it out completely if you're more comfortable with that. 
Um, we've got our oats. So again, this is a whole grain. This is going to add some fiber and it's specifically going to act as a binder with our recipe. When you're measuring oats, you want to use a measuring cup that looks like this. It's kind of flat so that you can scoop out the oats and then wipe off the top so that it's level. But we're going to add in a half a cup of oats as our binder. Then we're also going to add in a half a cup of milk as our liquid ingredient, again, to help bind that recipe. Milk's going to add some calcium, some vitamin D, some potassium, some riboflavin. Um, it's got a little bit of protein and carbohydrate in it as well. And when you're measuring milk, um, a, a measuring cup that looks like this is going to be better for liquids. So something that is leveled off, like the measuring cup I just showed you, that's really hard to measure liquids in. Um, it's better if you can use something like this that you can see on the side how much you're getting and then go ahead and pour that directly into the recipe. Okay, so then we have our final flavoring ingredients. We are using apple cider vinegar, uh, mustard. I have a whole grain mustard because that's my favorite, but if you prefer yellow mustard, that's fine as well. And then we have Worcestershire sauce as well that we're gonna add in. Um, Worcestershire, if you can spell it and say it, you get bonus points for this one too. Um, so I'm gonna start with the Worcestershire. We're gonna do a half, or sorry, one teaspoon of this, which is gonna add some flavor. We are doing one tablespoon of our mustard. And then we've got one tablespoon as well of our apple cider vinegar. Hey Amanda, real quick, somebody did ask what kind of mushrooms you recommend using. So, I mean, you can use a, a variety of different ones. I chose the baby Bellas just because that's my personal favorite. Um, but even the white button mushrooms, if you wanna use those, that's perfectly fine. There's a whole variety of mushrooms out there, but the Bellas and the, the button mushrooms are easiest to find at the grocery store. But if yours has a, a different variety that you'd like to try some different ones, any type will work just the same because they have that similar texture and they're gonna provide that similar moisture to the recipe. That's a good question. Okay, so for the meatloaf, we've got all of our ingredients added in. So now we're just gonna stir everything up so it's nice and mixed. If you wanna use your hands since they're clean, you are welcome to dig in and really mix everything in by hand. Just make sure you wash your hands afterwards as well. And then we can do one of two things with our meatloaf when it's ready. We can either use a loaf pan, which is what I'm gonna be using. So you can easily buy these at the grocery store. Um, we are gonna fill this up and just kind of level out the mixed ingredients in the recipe. If you don't have a loaf pan, you can use a sheet pan, like a cookie sheet. Uh, just spray that with some, uh, some cooking spray, uh, put the, the meat in the center and you can form it into the shape of a loaf. Amanda, one more question on the mushrooms. Are those healthier than like some other types like shiitake? Um, not necessarily healthier. They all have slightly different nutritional values. Um, so, you know, if you're getting a shiitake versus an inoki, inoki, I don't know how to say it exactly, uh, versus a, a baby Bella, they're all going to have slightly different nutritional profiles, but they will all contain those nutrients that we talked about. All right, so we've got our meatloaf in our pan here. Um, and again, if you're doing it on a sheet pan, you can just form it into a loaf, which makes it pretty easy. And we'll go ahead, our oven should be preheated by now. So we'll go ahead and throw that into our oven. And I did some TV magic. I already had one ready for you so that you could see what it looked like. But this is what the meatloaf is going to look like once it gets, once it's a finished product. So it does look different than a traditional meatloaf, right? It's a lighter color because it's turkey instead of beef. Um, this one's small because I only did half of a recipe, so yours will be about twice as high of, as this one. Um, but while the meatloaf is in the oven, we're gonna set that oven to bake for about 35 to 45 minutes. Um, how we know it's done is when we're using a meat thermometer that looks kind of like this guy, or maybe you have an electronic one. 
uh, we want it to read 165 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of the loaf. That's how we know that uh, the meat has reached the temperature where it's safe and it's fully cooked for us. So um, we know that this is our protein piece of our meal. So we've got that all ready to go. Um, but is this a full meal by itself? If I just eat this whole turkey meatloaf, is that a, a full meal? Is that acceptable from a health standpoint? Um, so let's pull up our final poll question. And I wanna talk about balancing these meals next. So what would we pair with our turkey meatloaf to make this a more balanced meal? Would we pair it with carbohydrate and color? Would we pair it with bread and pasta? I saw a fast response on the bread and pasta. Would we pair it with water and ice cream or would we pair it with more turkey meatloaf? I think people are still voting, but. It's good. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of, lots of different responses here. So it looks like some people said carbohydrate and color and um, the rest said bread and pasta. Okay. As much as I love bread and pasta, that is an incorrect answer. Uh, we want to pair this with carbohydrate and color. So we know that our meatloaf is our protein. Whenever we're, we're um, portioning our, our meal portions, whether it's protein or carbohydrate, I like to use hands as our, as our guide, right? So my hand is going to be larger or smaller than someone else's hand. So it's, it's more relative to our size, which determines what our portion needs are. Now, as you're more active, your portions also go up with that as well. And so this is just a guide to get us started. If you find you're more hungry than the portion you start with, it's appropriate for you to go back and have more food. If you're less hungry and you can't eat the full portion, it is okay for you not to eat the full portion and to listen to your body too. So when I'm portioning my meatloaf, since this is our protein, we want about a palm to a hand-sized portion of our protein portion. Now my meatloaf is about the same thickness as my palm, if you can see a little bit there. So what I'm gonna do is just make it about, make my portion about as wide as what my palm is. So I'll go ahead and cut my piece here and I'm going to put that on my plate. Another rule of thumb you can use for protein is it should cover about a quarter of your plate which is what this portion does for me too, okay? So we've got that piece started. So when we're finishing out the rest of this meal, we wanna find a carbohydrate food to put with it. Bread and pasta both count as carbohydrates. They're just missing that color piece. So you could use one of those. My personal favorite with meatloaf is mashed potatoes. So that's what we're gonna use today. Now I did go ahead and prepare some mashed potatoes for you. So you can see what these look like. So whenever we're doing mashed potatoes, we're going to get our cutting board back out, um, chop up those potatoes into smaller pieces, about one inch pieces, place them in boiling water and let them cook for until they become soft. Um, I did three large russet potatoes um, and it took about 25 minutes for those to get really, really nice and soft where I could mash them up to this, this texture. Now, white potatoes get a really bad rap. And I really like white potatoes because they do have some really great nutritional benefits and or in addition to tasting really good too. Um, so the skin on the potatoes got several antioxidants in it. Uh, there's a lot of fiber in that skin as well. So we're gonna make these rustic style, leave the skin on those potatoes. Um, but potatoes are also high in potassium and vitamin C as well, which help with our hydration, uh, helps with our immune system, um, also helps with skin integrity, ligaments, tendons, all of those things too. Um, so after those potatoes are boiled, you would drain those. And then I like to use a potato masher to get these nice and creamy. Some people like to use a hand mixer, which would work just fine, but I find this to be great. So it's fun because you just literally get to smash the potatoes. Um, and so you get a little bit of a aggression out on your day. Um, but all I did was add a little bit of milk, about a half a cup of milk into my potatoes. And then I added some butter as well. Uh, the type of butter that I like to use is actually a margarine product. It's a mix of butter, olive oil, and it's got a little salt in it. So 
So I just did two tablespoons of that with my three potatoes, with the milk, and then I mashed them up with our potato masher here. Now you'd also wanna add some salt and pepper for some flavor here. But again, if you're trying to limit your salt, you can leave that out. But if you're not used to low salt foods, it definitely tastes different um, when you're doing a lower, lower sodium um, mashed potato there. Most of our sodium is going to come from prepackaged foods. So like if you're doing a TV dinner or a frozen meal or frozen pizza, we get a lot of sodium from those things. Uh, we also get a lot of sodium when we go out to eat. So using salt in your cooking for a little bit of flavor is not generally my biggest concern when it comes to sodium. Okay, so we've got these potatoes mixed up pretty well. We'll go ahead and portion these onto our plate as well. So for the potatoes or for the carbohydrate piece, our portion size is a fist. So we want somewhere between one and two fists of our starch or carbohydrate on our plate. So let me just get my serving spoon here. And I'm going to do, since I'm a little less active right now, I'm gonna do about a fist, maybe a fist and a half of my potatoes. So your carbohydrate is gonna cover, again, a quarter to a half of your plate. So if you are less active, we would do a quarter of our plate. So maybe you're in the off season um, or maybe you're just not doing as much activity since you're staying at home more. Or if you're super active and doing a lot of exercise or you're, um, let's say it's active basketball season and you're playing, then you would do closer to that half plate portion to make sure that you're staying adequately fueled, okay? Okay, so we've got our carbohydrate portion here. Finally, our color piece is our, um, we're gonna actually use green beans for our color. So I picked green beans because I feel like green beans are pretty widely accepted um, for most of my, my young active people that I work with. Um, I, whenever you're using vegetables, you have a few different options. You can use the fresh choice, you can use the frozen choice, or you can do a canned option. I am fine with any of these that make sense for your nutrition but we wanna make sure that we're getting those in. So getting in at least three minimum fruits or vegetables a day, up to the older we are, the more fruits and vegetables we wanna eat, um, up to seven or maybe even eight servings a day of fruits and vegetables. A serving's about a half a fist or about a half a cup of, of a fruit or a vegetable. So I chose green beans. If you love Brussels sprouts, go for that. If you like bell peppers or carrots or extra tomatoes, any of those things can work just as well. Um, I personally like the frozen option. Um, frozen is actually left on the vine a little bit longer. So nutrition content can, can actually be a little bit higher than fresh, which has to get picked early and then travel to the grocery store. So it's just off of the vine for a little bit longer period of time. Um, so I'm using frozen. I also like for frozen that, um, you know, I can keep it in the freezer. It's not going to go bad on me. I can portion out the amount I want and then refreeze the item that I'm not using. Um, so I just find it to be very easy. Canned vegetables or canned fruits, um, you know, whenever we're canning something and soaking it in water, it does lose a little bit of that nutrition from soaking in the water. Um, however, I don't want that to be a deterrent from getting it in because it's also one of the most affordable options. So if you need something that is most affordable, your canned is probably going to be the best option. Um, frozen would be the next and then fresh, depending on the season, if it's in season, that might be the cheapest option. Uh, but if it's not in season, it might be a little bit more expensive. So all I'm doing with my frozen green beans, I put them in the fridge to let them thaw. And then I just added them to the pan with a little bit of olive oil to saute. And I'm just getting those warm. So it should only take about three to five minutes to get those to where they're warm and steamy. And then I'm gonna add those onto my plate. So for veggies, your portion size is very similar to your carbohydrate. We want it to be somewhere between one and two fists or about a quarter to half of our plate. So since my uh, mashed potatoes took up a quarter of my plate, my I've got about a half of my plate left for my veggies. So this is really the balance that I'd like to see on a plate. 
We've got the veggie portion, which is providing a lot of vitamins and minerals, a lot of antioxidants and a lot of volume to help us feel full. We've got carbohydrates from our potatoes, which is providing energy so that we feel fueled and we can continue to be active and have high energy levels throughout the day. And then we've got our protein component, which is our turkey, which helps us to build muscles and, and other tissues throughout the day as well. And we've got a little bit of a veggie bonus in our, in our meatloaf here too. So this is dinner for tonight. So I would love to hear what you guys think of that. And if you have other questions, um, feel free to post those in the chat as well. And I believe Megan's got my contact info. So if you have a question that you're not comfortable asking on the chat, um, feel free to send that to me by email as well. Thanks, Amanda. That was awesome. Um, I did just put a link to a survey in the chat too. So if you guys would want to take a couple minutes to take that, that'd be great. But most importantly, I just want to thank Amanda for this amazing demo and some education. And there's still time for a couple questions. If you have any, please just put them in the chat. And um, if not, we can send, um, like I said, her contact information out tomorrow and go from there. But we'd love to know what you guys thought about the recipe as well. Anybody have questions? <laughs> Just some thank yous. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you guys for joining. And I guess, Amanda, here's just a question. Is this like one of your favorite go-to recipes or is this something that um, like is a newer one that you've been trying? Oh yeah, no, that's, so this is a favorite recipe of mine. So I grew up in the Midwest um, in Missouri and my grandmother would make meatloaf a lot. She would make it a little different than how I made it today. Um, but meatloaf and mashed potatoes were always a thing that we enjoyed. Um, so I'm a very into comfort food and I wanna share the health benefits of that and also show people that good nutrition doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be salads all the time. Um, or just grilled chicken and uh, cauliflower, which I think a lot of people think is healthy. Um, but yeah, this meatloaf we make on a probably two or three times a month in our household. It's one of the, our favorites. Great. Well, if nobody else has any questions, I think that will be it for the night, so. Um, thank you everybody for coming and um, we will also later this week post this on our website under the events and education page of the health huddle. So if you do want to um, look at it, watch it again or anything, you will be able to do that. So, um, and then I guess the last thing would be if you ever have any recommendations for other topics or speaker series you'd like to see, you can always feel free to reach out via email um, to healthhuddle at goldcrownfoundation.com. So we're very fortunate to have Children's Hospital of Colorado as one of our partners, and we look forward to doing more events with them too. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs>